Yo, what is up, Red Nation? It's your boy Samori back at it again with another video. Now, I know I've been gone for the past couple of days. I was actually in the LA area for the whole weekend leading up to the Monday night football game, and I was able to go out and experience this game at SoFi Stadium and seeing the millions and millions, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you, the thousands and thousands of Raider fans at SoFi Stadium. I mean, we, we ran LA. You've seen nothing but black out there, and it still shows you guys that the Raiders still own LA. You can put the Rams and the Chargers over there. We're still gonna show up for our team win or lose now with that being said i would say that my experience before the game was awesome you know i got to meet a lot of fans out there a lot of supporters out there some family members out there i i was able to vlog all over SoFi State, I'm getting a lot of clips, which I am gonna put together and probably upload tomorrow, so you guys keep an eye out on that. But as far as the game would go, it was kind of stressful to watch the game because I know we started off pretty slow. We did pick it up later in the game, but it was a little bit too late for our team. I know we took the L, but at the end of the day, it's Raider Nation for life, win, lose, or draw, and we move on to the next one. Now, before I do get started with this video, if this is the first time you're coming across my channel and you love the Las Vegas Raiders, then hit that subscribe button, hit that notification icon button, just to notify you guys when I upload more videos just like this. So with that being said, let's get started with the video. And you tell them one thing. Just one thing, dude. Before we get started with this game recap, I got some quick nation news that you guys can definitely use. Cornerback Keyshawn Nixon is set to return to practice after being placed on IR with a leg injury. Cornerback Damon Arnett, Trayvon Mullen, and tight end Derek Carrier are all undergoing MRIs. So we'll see how serious these injuries will be in the upcoming days. Running back Peyton Barber was diagnosed with a mild turf toe and will likely be out two to four weeks and possibly placed on IR. Cornerback Nate Hobbs has clear concussion protocols and is practicing today. He will most likely play in this week's matchup versus the Chicago Bears. So with the plethora of injuries at the cornerback position, the Raiders signed cornerback Brandon Faison off of the Chargers practice squad. Faison, 27 years old, appeared in 44 games in his career with four starts totaling 60 tackles, one pass breakup, one forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. And 2020, he was targeted just nine times, allowing seven receptions for 49 yards. So to start things off, the game was actually delayed due to lightning in the area, and I was actually at the game, so I can confirm that it was true. It was kind of weird because I was like, damn, it kind of seemed like a Charger type of day because there was nothing but lightning and rain going around, and, and the game ended up being delayed. And honestly, to me, I was kind of surprised because we were in an indoor stadium. I don't know how that would have affected the field or whatnot, but I guess, uh, you know, the video board did go down a couple of times before the game actually started, so I think they were trying to make sure everything was uh, good before we actually got the game rolling. And when the game finally started, Man, I would honestly say it was a tough one to watch. Our offense started way too slow out there, and they were non-existent, you know, from the play calling to our offensive line. Our offensive line, oh my goodness, don't even get me started with this team. Alex Leatherwood definitely needs that leather on his backside because this dude was pissing me off most of the game, especially in the first half. Nothing but penalties. He let Joey Bosa come through on a strip sack. And I know a lot of people are trying to defend Alex Leatherwood saying, yo, he's a rookie. Th th these things are gonna happen. Okay, I understand that, but I still expect him to go out there and get his job done. And this isn't the first time that Alex Leatherwood has gotten penalties after penalties because he's been doing it for the first four weeks of the season and he still hasn't cleaned it up. Now I know a lot of people are gonna talk about Colton Miller's rookie season saying, yo, he was bad his rookie season, but he ended up being good. Okay, I don't give a damn. We drafted this dude in the first round and the difference between Colton Miller's year and our year this year is we didn't have a chance at making the playoffs that year. We was trash that year. Going Going into the season, this could definitely be our season, so we cannot have any hiccups at all. We cannot have anything happen to Derek Carr. A lot of you guys are gonna give that excuse that he's a rookie until Derek Carr gets hurt. And when he does get hurt, who are we gonna blame? Alex freaking Leatherwoods. Now, just because I'm getting on Leatherwoods' ass right now doesn't mean that he's gonna be a bust. Nonetheless, I'm gonna call him out on his shit. It's the same way I call out Derek Carr when Derek Carr has a bad game. I'm one of the biggest Derek Carr supporters, but if somebody's gonna have a bad game out there and be shitty, I'm gonna call him out on that shit, but I'm still gonna believe in them to be the best player that they could be for this team. So with that being said, I wanna talk about John Gruden's play calling in the beginning of this game because it was horrible. It was freaking trash. In the first half of this game, we didn't have any first downs. 
Think about that. No first downs in the first half of the game. And the only time that we did convert a first down, we got called for a taunting penalty. Are you fucking shitting me? That is crazy. The NFL definitely needs to get rid of this taunting rule because if you look at the play, Darren Waller just spiked the ball and was hyped up for this play. And he did that and he's done that for the first couple of weeks and never got called for it. But all of a sudden they want to call that shit in this game. I'm telling you guys, these referees were definitely against us in this game. Now I'm not going to give any excuses to us losing the game I'm just saying that the referees were acting a bit suspect on a couple of these calls now as y'all can see I got no MVP to the game or my neck and my back play of the game but if there was a play that really stood out to me in the first half of this game it would be my boy Hunter Renfro laying the smack down on Trayvon Campbell on that fake punt that they tried to get us with but Hunter Renfro was there to give this guy the wood son pause there's need to play they got a fake tie long to throw for it. He needs and some milk. And knocked out of bounds. <laughs> my neck and my back. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do believe that the Raiders should you know, dabble with Hunter Renfro at the cornerback position. You know, the way this dude is making plays out there, man. What can't Hunter Renfro do? You know what I mean? Now, as far as the Chargers, they came out swinging on their first drive of the game with the touchdown to start the game off, and they were up 7-0 most of this game. And our defense, I give credit to them, they held it down for most of the first half until three minutes left, where they ended up scoring 14 more points, leading us 21-0 to at halftime. And at this point, I was kind of like worried. I was like, damn, we aren't doing anything out there. And I believe we had like under 50 yards total in the first half, but we had to come out uh, and clean it up. And that's what we did coming out of the half we were firing on all cylinders you know we went back to back drives with the touchdown and we were only down 21 to 14 and we had a chance to tie the ball game up now we did have to settle for a field goal which daniel carlson rarely misses he missed the field goal and we were still 21 to 14 at the time and i believe that's when everything started going downhill because they came back they scored we tried to go down the field Derek Hart throws an interception and the rest is history we gotta start off games firing straight out of the gate we cannot be going down and trying to make our way back each and every game especially against a good team like the la chargers we gotta clean those things up it's not every game that we're gonna come back and you guys can definitely see that in this game so the final score was 28 14 we lost this game we dropped down to three and one we are still tied for first place in the afc west but the chargers have that crown for right now and the the chiefs are the bottom feeders of the afc west which is kind of funny to me now the funniest thing about this game was that charger fans and the chargers organization was acting like this was the super bowl for them and i understand they're all a bit salty because you know the raider nation showed up and it looked like a home game for us and i know Derek carr came out in his press conference before this game and said that this was a home game for this is just another home game for the raiders and is he lying? Because if you were there at the game or if you were watching on TV, you see nothing but black jerseys all over the stadium. It was 80-20. I'm telling you, it was a home game. When the Chargers came out onto the field, you heard nothing but boos. When you seen the Raiders score a touchdown, you heard Raiders throughout the whole stadium. So I understand why they would be mad, but don't get it twisted. We still could come back for that ass on January 9th when, when we go one-on-one -on -one in Las Vegas. But one guy that was real salty after the game, especially after they won this game, was Joey Bosa. He had to throw a little jab at our quarterback, Derek Carr. Uh, we knew once we hit him a few times, he really gets shook. And, and you saw on, on CeCe's sack, he was pretty much curling into a ball before we even got back there. But we know once you get pressure on him, he kind of shuts down and he's not as effective with the with the crowded pockets. Bruh, if Derek Carr was as shook as you said he was, then how come we came back within one score? This dude threw two touchdowns and wasn't even phased by your guys' defense. We just didn't execute to win the game. I do want to give a shout out to Jim Trotter for calling Joey Bosa out on his bullshit. Yeah, I want to talk to Joey Bosa here and say this. You were way out of line with your comments on Derek Carr last night. If he was as bad or as cowardly as you intimated, why was he 9 of 10 for 76 yards and two touchdown passes in the third quarter behind a line that couldn't protect him? And he wasn't the only one. Shannon Sharp, a guy that I don't really agree with most of the time, actually made a good point and even called Joey Bosa out on his bullshit as well. I saw a guy, team get down 21-0. He comes out of the half, goes on a six-minute drive, get it to 21-7. They stop him, get the ball back, goes 21-14. Does that look like a guy that curled in the ball to me? It sounds like Joey Bosa sounds like a guy that's not used to winning in the NFL. But I'm not subscribing to this thing that all of a sudden Derek Carr folded up his tent and ran away because I didn't see that. But looking at it from my television, I didn't see a guy that quit. I saw a guy that battled and battled and battled to the end. 
but they lost to the better team last night. And it's funny to me because Joey Bosa even complained about the referees not making some calls and that the referees are blind out there, yet Mad Max Crosby is getting held almost each and every single play, and he didn't get any calls out there. So fuck out of here with what you're complaining as. Just enjoy the victory and move on. But at the end of the day, Raider Nation, I, I do got to give some props to the Chargers. They won this game. They handled business. They were more hungry for this game than we were, and they came out and they showed it. It was a little bit too late for us to come back and win this game, but we just got to move on, and hopefully... When we see them again in Las Vegas, we take that W and shut their asses up. So with that being said, what do you guys think about this game? Are you guys worried about anything moving forward? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, Nation, that is all I have for you guys today on this video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button. If this is the first time you're coming across my channel and you love the Las Vegas Raiders, then hit that subscribe button, hit that notification icon button just to notify you guys when I upload more videos just like this. I will be in Las Vegas this weekend for the Bears game at Sahara Las Vegas with my boy Raider Cody. So if you guys are trying to come through, kick it, watch the game and have a good time, then come on over to Sahara Las Vegas this weekend. With that being said, until the next video, this is your boy Simone Raider and your boy is... Yeah. And you tell them one thing. Yeah.